After a night spent in the woods, we awoke to sights and sounds of a serene woodland landscape. Moss and mushrooms covered every stone and log, and the canopy flowed in the late summer breeze. It was good to be back on the trail. For our first backpacking outing since the road trip, we chose to hike through this beautiful landscape on the Manistee River Trail. And with all the water, we found plenty of mushrooms sprouting from the ground. Okay, so there's these mushrooms on the ground. This one has been plucked already and eaten by slugs. And there's another one hiding in here. This is in the genus Lactifluss, which basically just means like a milky cat. And the reason is because when you cut the gills, this sort of milky white substance comes out. Milky cat mushrooms in the genus Lactifluss and Lactarius often have a vase-shaped cap where the center is sunken in. I'm just gonna leave it for the slugs. The trail went down into gulches and back up along hillsides, every time revealing a spectacular view of the river to the west. And on the opposite side, mushrooms like this bolete hid in the foliage. We've seen a few puffballs over our time, but this one is called the gem-studded puffball, also just called the common puffball. It's got these tiny little prickles or little studs on it, but these are actually edible, and when you cut it in half, if it's pure white on the inside like that, then it's good to eat. We donned our rain jackets as it started drizzling from the overcast skies above. And along the way, we saw one of the cliffside campsites this trail has to offer. So this is one of the designated campsites that you'll run along to on the Manistee River Trail. And when I was here with Nicole, we actually stopped by a really great one further up. And I'm hoping we'll stay at that one tonight because you walked in towards the river and had a great overlook of the river, but we'll see if that one's gonna be available tonight. It'll be good. Just being next to the big river with that open view, it's like super calming and it's kind of a relaxing feeling right now. But I'm also really excited to look at how beautiful that river is for reasons that I will not say right now. <laughs> the one good thing about the rain is that it's cooled off the weather substantially. It definitely feels like it's about to start coming down pretty hard. <laughs> We wandered through a stand of white pines, and I spotted some medicinal and edible plants. So as I'm walking, I see this yarrow plant sticking out over here, but also all along this hillside are these three-leaf plants, which to an untrained eye might actually look like poison ivy, but this actually is a plant in the pea family called groundnut, but it also has a name called hog peanut, because it's sort of a name that people gave to it to sort of shame Native Americans who were eating this plant. They basically said, well, this is food that only a hog would eat, and that's why they called it that. Groundnut has edible legumes that grow both above ground and underground. We also saw this interesting painted rock hidden away in some tree roots. We continued on the trail and came to another overlook that provided an amazing view of the river. We were finally back in nature, on our own feet, breathing in the open air. There were no walls separating us from the wilderness. Being this exposed to the wild, can be an ecstatic experience, but it can also cause all sorts of unwanted trouble. In the midst of a thunderstorm, we continued hiking. The weather had us a bit nervous, but there was nothing we could do about that right now. We passed by some turkey tail fungi, stopped for lunch, and I spotted some signs of a certain tree. On the ground I found this peculiar looking seed thing. This actually belongs to the American linden tree or basswood tree. And this tree actually, it's got leaves that are edible in the springtime when they're just first forming and they're kind of 
light green and tender. And these seed pods, when they're still green, uh, they're actually a good medicine to brew a tea in. And you can also extract the nuts from these little bits here. Obviously this one's a little past the prime, but you can take the nuts out of there and eat those too. The leaf looks nothing like this on the tree, um, but yeah, it's seed pod just looks so weird. Was it Granny Smith's that we had in the Smokies? It might have been. I bring them out every time now, just for nostalgia's sake. Oh, really sweet. <laughs> Eating it like corn on the cob. <laughs> 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 so these are Ganoderma aplanatum, the artist conch. You can draw on the pore surface and you can make some nice pretty pictures. Some mountains. I don't know, whatever, you know, a little bird up here. <laughs> but it's pretty satisfying to just do that. The pore surface will grow back when it's on the tree every year and uh, you can sort of keep rubbing it off. Along with artist conch, we also saw some crowded parchment fungi and some false turkey tails. As the rain continued falling, the path led us down into the forest where we crossed a bubbling brook. Then we climbed a small hill and entered a section of the forest that was covered in an expanse of ferns. Despite the rain, I keep taking my hood off because it's so warm that I just am sweating from the inside out. So it's like, if comfort is the issue, I might as well just have my hood down. I will say after having experienced Big Sur, I'm not as afraid of this type of weather anymore. I'm coming into it with the right expectations. So even if we get wet, I feel like it'll be much more manageable than Big Sur. You go out and you backpack for the first time. It's an awful experience. Everything that's out of your control happens. And that just makes you be more prepared for your next backpacking trip. That's true, isn't it? Yeah, something I always talk about is the bullet ant glove. There's a tribe of people in South America who live in the jungle. And they construct a glove out of leaves and they put a bunch of bullet ants stinger side in. And you have to stick your hand in there for like hours, multiple times as a coming of age ritual. And I'm pretty sure after that, nothing in the jungle phases them. <laughs> I think there's a lot of things in life that's like that. Hidden among the foliage was a small amphibious friend. So this, it looks like Bufo americanus, the American toad. There's a similar one called Bufo fowleri, but the way you tell is that its bumps are surrounded by these dark spots. And on the American toad, there's only like one or two bumps in each spot. And on the other toad, the fowleri toad, or whatever it's called. <laughs> uh, there's multiple bumps in a black spot. Also, sometimes when you try to pick these toads up, they'll uh, pee right in your hand, and that's sort of a defense mechanism. <laughs> it's not very pleasant, but it's probably better than what they're experiencing. <laughs> we came across yet another campsite. Brian, is this one of the campsites? Huh. So I guess this is an official campsite, but it's really interesting because they just have this slab of concrete here. Like, it's all over. Dude, but... we are on the lost island. Yeah, that is really weird. <laughs> There's a hatch underneath here. <laughs> this, this is such a cool place. <laughs> this is really cool. Before moving on, we enjoyed another view of the river. Birds flew along the river valley, and down below, some other outdoor enthusiasts paddled downstream. As for us, we continued on our feet down into another gully, which opened up into a flat, swampy expanse. We passed by some interesting pine trees before entering a wetland area full of goldenrods, rushes, and willows. We hiked on in the rain, and though it wasn't the best of conditions, we did find some fantastic treasures because of the damp weather. All right, these aren't the biggest balls I've seen, but these are some giant puffballs, <laughs> and there are lots of them. Come on, check this out. 
Look at this. They're they're all over too. Like it's like they've just stumbled across the seven Dragon Balls. Feel this. Tell me this does not feel just like a baseball or something. Whoa. Ooh, wow. Doesn't that feel like? Does it puff? So later on, when it gets older, it'll turn yellow inside, and all the spores will release when it like falls apart. But I think we're gonna collect some of these and eat them up at some point. And it's perfectly white inside, which means that it's good to eat. I gotta find a place to store these. <laughs> Puffballs can get much bigger than this, bigger than your head even. But these were good enough for us. We came across some old, worn-out trees full of holes and cracks. Here's Johnny! <laughs> and then continued on. I think the rain is letting up. <laughs> I just want to continue my jinxing throughout the day, every now and then tempt fate. Just kidding, I'm not. Whatever you give us is good. <laughs> it's probably one of the Midwest's more interesting looking plants, but this is the seed pod of a Jack in the Pulpit. And especially with the rain where everything's like this vibrant green, the red berries just like stick out so vibrantly. And it's got these uh, characteristic three leaves. And earlier in the season, before these were berries, it was more like this pitcher plant flower kind of thing. It's just a really interesting looking plant. And we also saw some beautiful grass of Parnassus flowers. <music> Further along the trail were some more fungi, like white coral fungus. We also saw another toad and some interesting acorns. These acorns look like those, uh, what are those called? Caltrops. Breasts. Yeah, the defenses that they use in World War II. What are those called? Caltrops. It is Caltrops? Yeah. Okay. Oh, whoops. Whoa. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and then, in a stretch of pine forest, we found some more exciting mushrooms. Okay, so this is super exciting for me. Uh, this is the first time I've seen these mushrooms. These are called lobster mushrooms. And they've got this like distinct red, almost powdery look, and these like not very uh, distinct ridges. And what this actually is is a parasitic fungi taking over another mushroom. But it is an edible. It's considered a choice edible. Unfortunately, the insides were a little too buggy and rotten, so we didn't bother picking any mushrooms. We also saw some yellow feathers, possibly belonging to an American goldfinch. Eventually, the trail intersected with the road, where we stopped to take a look at the map. This is where we are right now, Cottage Road. Looks like there's a campsite, 7A, just up ahead where we could sit down and have a bite. But 3B is where Nicole and I took our first break. It was right in front of that big U-turn on the river. And that's a great campsite, but I'd like to get up to 3A, which is also a really good campsite, and it puts us much closer to the, the dam for tomorrow morning. We had been hiking north on the Manistee River Trail, and would continue north from here. We would hike parallel to the river, heading upstream the entire time. Along the way, we'd be camping at campsite 3A for the night. Once we reached the northern terminus at the Hodenpil Dam, we had some other things in mind for the rest of the trip, but we talk about that later. We came across some edible partridge berries. And the trail again led onto a foggy gully where we crossed Cedar Creek. The haze gave the whole area a beautiful, mysterious appearance. Back on top of the hill, I found some more mushrooms. This tiny orange mushroom in the ground here. It's so small that you may not even notice it just walking around, but this is Cantarellus minor, which is a species of chanterelle that's really tiny. Usually it's got a much more distinctly bright orange color compared to the common chanterelles that you're used to finding. But it does have the same characteristics where instead of gills, it just has ridges on the bottom. Also equally tasty. And then the trail led to another intersection with a road. The same road Nicole and I started hiking on our last time here.
Back in the woods, we were surrounded by pines, and we saw some underripe false Solomon seal berries, which are edible once they're a solid red color. So I have actually never seen this plant before, but I'm pretty sure it is in the milkweed genus. Uh, you've got pods here that resemble very much the swampy milkweed that grows back home. The leaves look really different from what I'm used to though. They're a lot like thinner and more delicate, I guess. But this broken leaf, you can actually see some of the milk seeping out of it. So it's definitely gotta be something in that genus. As it turns out, this was a butterfly milkweed, which is usually found in more open meadows and has brilliant orange flowers in the summertime. The trail led us down a hill once again, where we had crossed a sturdy bridge. Once we crossed the stream, Andrew spotted some signs of a treat hidden in the soil. So one thing that a lot of people like looking for in the springtime are ramps or wild leeks. Uh, but around this time of year, the leaves are long gone and that's usually the easiest way to identify them. But if you look carefully, you can find these stalks with all these seeds. Uh, the seed pods will be these green, like sort of three bump things. And the seeds are these like dark black, almost pearly looking spheres. If you see one of these, you can just pull it up from the ground. Just kind of got to work at it and then Then you just peel this outer layer off to get to the garlicky good stuff inside. Although ramps are particularly popular in the spring, they're a delicious treat to find in autumn. But I never take more than a few when I'm using the bulbs, and I scatter the seeds on the stalk so no more ramps will continue to grow. How are you guys hanging? I feel pretty good now, actually. Now Thomas? that we've started moving a little bit more, kind of like feeling the energy come back to me. Yeah. Especially after the humidity of the rain. The rain had died down, but the weather still seemed testy. The trail once again opened up and meadowy plants grew from the sandy soil. We looked across the river at the peculiar juniper trees on the opposite bank, and then decided to try a tart treat growing nearby. So I'm actually not sure what species of cherry this is, but uh, I do know it is a cherry tree and like, you're not gonna get poisoned by a cherry. It's going to be really sour though, most likely. Um, the darker the berry, probably the sweeter. Very sour. Hmm. Yeah, it like, makes me want to spit it out immediately. But yeah. It's actually a little bitter, that one that I had, so. Same. But it does taste like a cherry. Yeah, you can have that like cherry essence in it, but uh, super bitter too. <laughs> it's like a tiny grape. <laughs> and then, we were off. Aspen trees stood tall above an open expanse of ferns. Deeper in the woods, we wandered along old, moss-covered tangles of roots. And growing nearby was the poisonous doll's eye plant. The sharp twists and turns of the river became even more visible from this spot along the trail. We decided to sit down and have a snack. Off in the distance, we saw some dogs who had excitedly scrambled down the steep river bank, but were now struggling to get up. Luckily, they eventually found their way back up. Now that the dogs were safe, we felt we could move on. Grassy, open forests grew on our right, and the river flowed rapidly to our left. We now entered another section of pines, where ferns spanned across the forest floor. Whether it was out in the open or deep in the woods, this whole landscape was absolutely beautiful. And it was teeming with life, like this huge mushroom. We neared some flowing creeks and came across a strange omen. Someone did not make it through the night. <laughs> I don't know why someone would just leave this whole thing here. It's like somebody abandoned their entire tent set up. It's gotta be like $100, right? <laughs> I don't know. We moved onward, hiking into a section of the woods that was flooded with pools of placid water. Orange coral fungi sprouted from the surrounding damp leaf litter. Sections of the trail went right along the riverbank, where the flowing waters had massively eroded the sandy cliffs away. Growing nearby was blue cohosh, a traditional medicinal plant. 
one really good thing about today is that we're actually going to get to our campsite before it gets dark. Yeah, Thomas has been uh, kind of pushing us along, but it'd be good to get there because we never know when the rain might hit again. And setting up in the dark is bad enough. Yeah. Setting up in the dark with rain <laughs> is awful as we experienced in Shenandoah. <laughs> Nobody wants to do that. <laughs> Plus, we've got some mushrooms to cook up tonight. <laughs> you guys ready? <laughs> Did you ever get a second wind when hiking? Like especially when you get close to a campsite? Because like when we were eating lunch, I was like, man, I'm really tired. I would love to just stop right here. It's like when you know that you're about to hit something good, you just get that burst of energy because why wouldn't you, you know? Yeah. You might as well make it to that spot. It also helps that like the weather actually cleared up. I think that gave us a nice second wind too. That's true. I was going to say maybe it's good to front load the rain so that the rest of the trip seems easy by comparison. But I, I, don't, I don't know if I actually think that though. Because <laughs> if you have rain at the end, you can just be like, whoo, at least we get to leave and have a post hike meal. <laughs> Okay, so there's some ground here, and this is very bizarre. Look at this. What? Seems like it's hollow underneath. Yeah. Between the strange, muddy ground and the alien-looking green elf cup fungi and the uncertainty of the weather, this hike had a beautiful but bizarre feeling. We made our way towards our campsite and saw another bizarre sight. It's that big pile of trash there. I don't know. It's always frustrating seeing litter left behind by other people, especially when it's so much that we can't hike it out ourselves. But nonetheless, we were feeling pretty happy as we hiked into our campsite for the night. Is this a great view or what? This is a good campsite. We relieved our shoulders of our bags and sat down to rest a bit. We had actually hiked a decent amount, and dealing with the rain earlier had been fairly exhausting. But we soon had to set up our camp, as we didn't know how long the good weather would hold up. I am taking my sweet, sweet time with this. As we were setting up, some other campers told us they were heading out, and that we could take their spot, which was a bit more centrally located. Yeah. Yes. So we we're gonna leave really early tomorrow, but we decided we're just gonna go tonight. Oh. Want, so don't feel like you need to stay on this we're side if you want to move like while you're getting set up. Oh. Oh, thank you. Not to alarm you guys, but that rain is yes. really coming. Tell Andrew to hurry up. Rain was falling, and I hurriedly set up a large tarp so that we could all take refuge. You're the most incompetent group in the world. <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna use uh, Thomas's hiking poles to sort of hang up the rest of them as if it's a tree. And the tension is what will keep everything up. As Andrew set up the tarp, we began transferring all our gear underneath to keep it relatively dry. This is uh, gonna be a vast improvement from Big Sur though. Oh my Just God, having yeah. this to stand under. This will be great. We moved all our shelters together, forming one big rainproof fort. I don't feel rain on me. What about you? I think this is great. Yeah. <laughs> this is, yeah. Thomas was saying this is the most prepared we've ever been. Yeah. I wish the tarp could be a little more taut everywhere, but uh, no, this is nice. So this was uh, Josh Lowry who sent it to us. Yeah, the Rebel Eye. So we were gonna bring it out to Big Sur, but totally brain farted and didn't bring it. It would have been really nice. We could have totally there. used that in Big Sur. Yeah. Yeah. Every time we are expecting rain, I've wanted to have just like a little setup where we had a tarp to take shelter under it. And finally we're doing it. And it's actually really, really nice. Yeah, this is fantastic. Like I said, it's not going to be raining all night, so we shouldn't experience anything like Big Sur. I'm pretty sure this is the nicest I've ever felt in the rain. <laughs> yeah, Josh Lurie, thank you, because like, it was awesome. <laughs> Saved us. Oh my god. Won't you be my neighbor? Good luck, guys. Take care. This is what we call decadent living. Well, at least that's what I call it. No one else might call it. This is what you call bluffing. This is what you call decadent backpacking. We need some chocolates to feed to each other. It's like the opposite of Big Sur, man. Like Big Sur, we're cramped in these little tiny tents, like just like miserable. And this one, we're like. 
Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice. Fool me once, can't get fooled again. <laughs> <laughs> It was really peaceful under our big shelter, but the rain kept coming down and pooling up in the saggy parts of the tarp. The storm picked up, and we added some fortifications to our tarp shelter. We set up this wall over here. There's still another gap between these two tarps, but we felt some of the mist blowing in, so I think it'll help a little bit. We're getting misted from this side now. <laughs> well, oh well. <laughs> we were able to take a look at the weather radar and it looks like it's gonna be gone within an hour, but right now I think we're right in the heart of the biggest part of the rain. Eventually, the rain subsided, and we wandered out from underneath the tarp. We snacked a bit, hung up some clothes to dry, and got out the puffballs for dinner. These are so big, dude. Dude, they, they get as big as your head. They're bigger, really. That's pretty impressive, Dan. It's actually, you can do it if you just... Oh. After a few party tricks, I peeled the latex-like skin off the puffballs. This part of the mushroom is perfectly edible, but ours had gotten dirty, and we didn't want to waste any drinking water cleaning them off. You know, sometimes I think that people litter because just humans aren't meant to think in that way. Because they found, like, archaeological piles of shells and, like, discarded bones and stuff called midden piles. Where people would just, like, eat mussels on the beach and then throw it behind them. <laughs> really? But it makes sense because, like, this stuff is all biodegradable. I mean... Yeah, maybe, maybe. As we sat there, the sun finally peered through the clouds and the golden evening light shined on our campsite. So it's, it's moments like these where, like I kind of think that existence is a balance between pain and pleasure, but I kind of think that it's like slightly biased towards pleasure. It definitely is. And it's moments like these that really make me think that. Like we endured the rain, but it really wasn't that bad. And now this moment is just like so sublime. It's like peeling oranges. <laughs> And these puff balls got the sun shining. I think in general you can count on the universe to be like 60 to 70 percent good and the rest bad. Mm, yeah that sounds right. So like whenever you're experiencing bad you just wait a little bit and then you'll get that creamy 60 to 70 percent. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of need that to understand what it is to be good. But yeah I don't know there's something about just like being wet and then drying off outdoors. That's yeah. like that is the height of existence right there, for a human at least. <laughs> There's also something really like therapeutic about simple tasks like this. Oh yeah. You know how that people say like nobody snaps green beans with, with grandma anymore? <laughs> Those beautiful white skinned puffballs. I think we should pick them up. Let's do it. <laughs> to add some flavor to our puffballs are wild garlic bulbs. So these puffballs have both a very mushroomy aroma and kind of a mushroomy taste. Usually when I find these and I'm not camping, well first of all they'll be like this big. And I'll usually keep the skin on, just cut it in slices, dip it in egg and fry it in a pan. It's really good. Rum and drown in that cotton bag and see if there's anything we could throw in to spice it up. We decided to throw in some sriracha peanut butter to add a bit more flavor to our dish. It smells good. Mm. And after simmering for a while, it was time to give these puffballs a taste. Mm. It's actually really got like a texture of tofu or something. Mm. Not bad, pretty pleasing actually. Yeah, yeah. It looks terrible, <laughs> <laughs> but the texture is almost like a firmer tofu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And a good flavor, you can taste that garlic. Wow, wild garlic is mm -hmm. intense, dude. And you can taste some of the that mushroomy flavor too. I don't know if you're getting that. Mm. 
That's good, man. It has like a more flavor than you would give it credit for, mm -hmm. and not even just like the sriracha peanut butter and stuff. The the mushroom flavor is almost more of an aromatic sort of thing. Like yeah, it, it's juicy too. Mm, yeah, yeah. Wow. Why does fungus taste good? <laughs> <laughs> now we got Spider Man's Uncle Ben. With great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> okay. For our main course, we would be preparing some small tacos. First, we needed some Spanish rice. After heating up the rice, we added our next ingredient. This is Tony Paco's chili, which I think is like a Toledo brand. Nice. So there's already meat in there. Yeah, oh. And a lot of spice, apparently. It's the spice that makes it nice. Mm -hmm. And the rice. <laughs> <laughs> then we heated up some corn tortillas and melted slices of cheese on them. Oh, that's nice and melty. Oh my god, that's going to be great. I'll have to cut them a little thinner next time, but that's, I mean, I don't think anyone's going to complain about that. <laughs> and then we added some chili on top and indulged. Mmm, from the first bite, man. For once, your bachelor cooking has really <laughs> come in handy. This is great. Oh, this is my idea. Oh, good yeah. job, Brian. <laughs> but good job cooking it, Andrew. <laughs> I did nothing. <laughs> so this isn't technically a true talking number. <laughs> Can't go wrong. Man. That's no. really good. <laughs> Bottoms up. It's got everything you need. Cheese, meat, carbs. It's good. Look at that cheese right there. <laughs> when you have cheese, the world is a better place. It finally felt like things were really coming together. We had hot food in our bellies, the rain had dissipated, and the sun was finally out. And the only thing more beautiful than the sky was the mist rising up off the river's surface. Misty clouds rolled past a golden, sun-soaked backdrop. Before long, this hazy evening turned to dusk, and we all hoped this moment of peace would last for the rest of the trip. So let me ask you this. Do you think when you're outside in rough weather like this, are some people inherently better at roughing it, or you kind of have to like break your bones, it's so to speak. Practice. Practice yeah. to yeah. get better at this. I was going to say the same thing. Yeah, it's practice. Because yeah. every successive trip where we've had to deal with bad weather, it's gotten a little bit easier. And then we had Big Sur, and that was an anomaly. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because like every time I go home after a camping trip, I can feel myself just like withering away back into my civilized mode. <laughs> and I just feel like I need to get out more and like learn to endure it more. We start to pad our existence with <clears throat> convenience and the ability to not face adversity and inconvenience. And so when you're sitting there and you're trying to say, do I want to go hiking or backpacking this weekend? Well, it looks like it might rain for a few hours. That's going to be really uncomfortable. I better call it off. But once you're out here, you realize it's really not that bad. And like you sort of get into a groove of things. Not only is it not that bad, you miss out on all the good stuff like what we got right now if you aren't willing to deal with the bad part. Dealing with problems and making like that struggle into something that you look forward to and actually like take head on makes life a lot more satisfying. Sitting Inconvenient. under that tarp was actually kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adventure is such a funny word because you think that it's much more grandiose than it is. It's like a small adventure, but yeah. it's still so much fun. No, I mean, like, even when we were kids, we would, like, go to the fast food place at 7 a.m. or something. Mm -hmm. Like, that's an adventure yeah. when you're that age. Yeah. <laughs> it's important to take all the moments in life and see the bright spots in them, to enjoy the drama and adventure of the rougher bumps, and to live in the moment when the good times roll around. 
Later that night, we found a weighted sandbag someone had abandoned at the campsite, which we used to hang up our food for the night. And then, we drifted off to sleep. The next day, we awoke to overcast skies, flies, and equipment that was not particularly dry. In the river below, we spotted some common mergansers swimming around and diving underwater to catch fish. Some of the more successful ones had to fend off would-be thieves. Eventually, the clouds rolled away to reveal a beautiful blue sky above. We had high hopes for the rest of the day. With the sun shining, we got our gear packed and headed out. We walked by some parasitic beach drop plants and hiked on through the woods. As we peered out from the forest, we saw bright sunshine and more blue skies, and our spirits were high. And growing on some damp logs were some witch's butter fungi, tiny oyster mushrooms, and some sort of pluteus mushroom. Super foggy river here, and I think this is a perfect spot to fill up water. So I'd say you. Good idea to me. Let's do it. The calm flowing stream we had filled up at was a stark contrast to what we saw next. Doesn't that look like chocolate? It doesn't look like it's even real. It's kind of like when you went to all those putt-putt golf courses when you were a kid and someone just lazily made a waterfall. Yeah. That's what it looks like. And then we came across the campsite Nicole and I had stayed at during the spring. We stopped here because we thought it would be prudent to be closer to the dam for the hike the next day. The only disadvantage was that it's like right next to the trail, so. We continued hiking on. With what we had planned, it wasn't quite time to settle down at a campsite yet. Further up, the trail diverged into different paths. There's a little trail leading up here. We're gonna find out what's up here. Turns out, like the rest of this trail, it led to another incredible overlook of the Manistee River below. After enjoying the view, we continued on. views from the trail continued to impress, and as we hiked, we kept going from one distinct environment to another. Soon we saw a suspension bridge in the distance, which meant we were getting to the trail's northern terminus. But before continuing on, I spotted a wild edible to try. All right, so this is the fruit of a staghorn sumac, and you can actually suck on these little red berries. They've kind of got like this fuzzy texture, but they look like really tiny fuzzy strawberries. If you get the ones on the bottom, that might have more flavor, but it's got like this lemony sourness. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's that great though. <laughs> well, so the thing is when you forage these, you want to make sure it hasn't rained recently, which obviously it has, because that actually tends to wash all the flavor away. Mm. 
But it's like really good if you mix it in water and like you can create your own lemonade. It's a citrus taste for mm -hmm. sure. So we got an apple tree here, but unfortunately all the apples are too high to reach. Yeah. We can get one of those. There's a good one right there. I can you know, you can call me Tommy Appleseed. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, hey, we got multiples. <laughs> it's still good. It's still good. Maybe not. I'm gonna join that. Mm, that one's really good. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Michigan My apples indeed. Mmm. Yeah. Let me try that one. Wow. Mmm. Wow, that is delicious. <laughs> wow. Mm. I was expecting them to be really sour. Mm hmm Yeah, I was just about to ask you guys, after that disappointing berry that we just had, what's your favorite thing you found on the trail? I think I just found mine. Mm -hmm. Little did Thomas know, he'd feel even more disappointment in just a few minutes. So, where are the canoes supposed to be? Well, I'm just hoping that we'll see them somewhere near the shore of the dam. We might have to kind of look around a bit, though. Oh. We may have had to have gone on the other side. Well, I'm just trying to... We arrived at the dam, and as cool as it was to see it from our vantage point, we were supposed to be heading off the trail and taking canoes back down the river, but there was no clear spot to launch a canoe. So as near as we can tell, the canoe, there's no good place for it to land this side of the river, but there's a parking lot over there. And at the bottom, there's an actual canoe launch point. So I think our best bet is to go back, cross the suspension bridge, and then head over there. And hopefully the canoe is somewhere up in that parking lot. Our tired feet yearned for the river, and it was a bit of a hike back to the wobbly suspension bridge. It is a little wobbly. Whoa. Yeah, this is definitely wobbly. Whoa! Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Let's not linger too long. On the other side of the river, we passed by some more staghorn sumac and emerged at a parking area. From there, we followed a stretch of dirt road to the other side of the dam. And finally, we found some hope. See anything? I think we got lucky. We're on the right side this time. Good. Yeah, this has to be it. Pine River watercraft. So this is it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we, we got, got it. <laughs> so that was my fault, actually. I just kind of assumed the canoes would be dropped off on the east side of the river. So we had to do a little extra walking, but we got our canoes. The confusion and the extra hiking seemed annoying in the moment, but it only made us appreciate getting out on the water that much more. We secured our bags to the thwarts and glided out onto the river. This is what I live for. <laughs> it's like, I can never overstate how much I love canoeing. <laughs> and especially after like hiking miles through the rain, to be able to get our packs off and just glide on the water, it's like so liberating. Yeah, this is quite nice. No complaints for me. Oh! Oh man, this is the life right here. This is sublime. <laughs> That's what this is. <laughs> Look at this beautiful river, dude. Oh, it's so cold, dude. We gotta go swimming. Right? It felt so amazing to be flowing down the water with such ease, even if it meant getting pushed around by the current a little bit. Uh oh. No. Uh -oh. <laughs> In just a couple of minutes, we paddled under the suspension bridge that we had trudged across earlier. It was amazing how fast we were going back down the river, speeding past sections of the trail that took us so much longer to hike. Up ahead, there was a split with a bit of choppier water on the left. Andrew's very confident in his paddling abilities. All right. Going right? We're going right. All right. No, I'm good with that. <laughs> <laughs> You got this? Yeah. Uh-oh. That big rock right there. Andrew. Andrew, we got a big branch up ahead. 
Andrew! Andrew! Okay. We cleared that a lot faster than they did. I don't, I don't even see them yet. What happened to them? Okay, so we're in some shallow water. Let's get ourselves out. Yeah. Looks like the right path is untraversable. Okay. Well, here we go. Oh, it looks a lot worse than it is. <laughs> We were pushed along by the fast river currents, which was quite a bit of fun. You working hard? Cause I ain't. Neither am I. <laughs> the river was absolutely beautiful, with vegetation and wildlife surrounding us on all sides. But there were moments where our peaceful glide became a bit more of a hectic ride across rapids. But either way, one thing seemed for sure. Paddling sure beat hiking. Do you guys remember when we had to walk around hauling our packs like suckers? <laughs> <laughs> I did too. It's a vague, distant memory now. Do you guys remember when you had to paddle for yourself? Me neither. <laughs> See? Andrew's like the me of driving. Thomas mentioned that I enjoy yeah. paddling as much as he enjoys driving. That only works though if we're not driving through the Midwest. As if you put me in a car full of corn fields for hours, I can't do that. It ain't about hiking. It ain't about paddling neither. You gotta find that balance. Thomas's Matthew McConaughey impression was just the thing to put us into a zen state of mind for the rest of our river journey. As we paddled down the river, the sun came out and a cool breeze rolled by. If there's any greater peace than canoeing in the wilderness, I certainly haven't experienced it. It's impossible to convey the feelings you get as you flow along the river. If someone asked me to tell them what it's like to canoe, I don't think I could put together all the right words to really convey just what it's like to be out here. Because you can say things like relaxing, calming, peaceful, but it, it's more than that. And it's just a feeling you, you can't explain. I can hear a catbird in the distance, kind of just mewing. As the catbirds called, we stopped along the way for a bite of lunch. We have some snacks from one of our viewers, Jen Potts. Please enjoy some trail snacks. Thanks for making such great content and for keeping me inspired year round. July 10th to 14th, I'll be on the Mount Whitney Trail and your episodes have been so helpful, as well as Thomas. Thanks for chatting with me. Happy trails and lots of new adventures, Jen Potts. She got all the way to Lone Pine, drove across the country, and there's a fire and the road was closed. Oh, oh geez, and so they couldn't even go up. But That's... they went to uh, Joshua Tree and said, and I think they had a good time. That's good. All right. So I'm sorry, Jen. Try again, but thank you. So we've got these honey honey stinger protein bars and 
this other bar. There were Stroop waffles included, but those all got eaten before we had a chance. Thank you for mm. sinking. Like a peanut buttery bar. Mm -hmm. mm. For honey. Yep, that coconut. And we got caffeine from coffee. Oh, whoops. <laughs> this one's coconut almond. Mm. Interesting. Thank you so much, Jen Potts. Follow her. Check the description below for her Instagram. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. And then it was time to relive our college days with some instant Mac and... Thank you to all our patrons. You helped make the upgrade from 25 cent ramen to 50 cent ramen. You look like a Japanese, like, mochi, ma mochi maker. This <laughs> menu is a little bit of a little bit of a but our flavor is still on point. <laughs> Crunchy. This is tonkotsu ramen. When I a lot of <laughs> Tastes really good. I just wish the bowl was bigger right now. <laughs> there is such a noticeable difference between cheap ramen and slightly less cheap ramen. <laughs> now, I know they say to wait however long after eating to swim, but I'm such a bad swimmer anyway, I don't think it'll make a difference. <laughs> That's a good, good rationalizing. This is like the perfect weather for this. Though. Man. Is there anything nicer? Yes. But. <laughs> oh. Not quite a hot tub in Louisiana, <laughs> but just as nice. I daren't stick my head under. <laughs> or dare I? Oh. Oh. oh, it's cold. Ah. Oh. 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 That's good. Mm. Dude, you gotta like seek opportunities like this out. One thing is for damn sure is that everyday life will not give you stuff like this unless you make an effort to go with it. You have to like work your way upstream. <laughs> I'm like legitimately trying not to get swept away right now. <laughs> okay, I'm good now. I found equilibrium. <laughs> I have found Zen. No, 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 what's it called? Nirvana? Satori. I have achieved Satori. I don't know if you achieved Satori. What are you guys up to? This is a new method of fishing where you just go like this and leave your mouth open. And just hope something swims into it. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> After goofing around like fools on land, we got back in our canoes and proceeded to goof around like a bunch of fools on the water. Feeling pretty good. Yes, we are. Oh, let's go over there, let's go over there, let's go over there. Someone's vaping really hard over there. <laughs> we passed by fallen logs resembling giant bones. And all around us, the first signs of autumn were showing. It feels like just yesterday we were in Point Reyes talking about the beginning of summer. Yeah. And now the leaves are already starting to change up here. I think being out here kind of reminds me of the importance of like, just living with sort of an awareness of life, living mindfully. Because it's so easy to just go week to week, kind of like an autopilot, and I do that a lot. But when you're out here and you have to like hike every mile or paddle down a river and 
you're just observing everything going on around you. You're kind of a lot more aware of your surroundings and it actually makes time pass a little slower. dead long stretches of serenity were occasionally interrupted by brief moments of panic not too close not too close not too close <laughs> there's a uh, shipwrecked canoe below us really yeah just now yeah. this is definitely the fastest river we've been on right yeah definitely more so than Mammoth, Green River? Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, Mammoth was very calm. As we paddled, we spotted a potential camping spot. Yeah. From here, the site looks pretty flat. Not too much high grass. Could be an ideal spot to camp. So we're gonna look for a spot to uh, dock our canoes. We got the boats docked and began setting up camp. I had apparently misplaced my tent poles and had to improvise a shelter with some hiking poles. And speaking of improvisation... So Thomas reminded us that we had these really convenient uh, paddles, which you can use as a way to set up your tarp as well, when you don't have any extra hiking sticks or just any sticks at all. <laughs> so I'm gonna do that. And as is common with our luck, before we could make any finesse adjustments to our shelters, the rain started coming down once again. We turned the canoes over and began shoving our gear under Andrew's hastily set up tarp. As the afternoon rolled by, the rain developed from a light sprinkling into a significant drizzle. The tarp is holding up for now, but if the weather gets really bad, we might have all four of us in Thomas' <laughs> tent. <laughs> Or under the canoes over there. <laughs> yeah, just each of us was like... <laughs> this is like the type of weather where suddenly lightning strikes five feet away from you. like, <laughs> summon fate. <laughs> <laughs> we got all these... holes. <laughs> <laughs> and no trees around us. Hmm. I really wish we would have stayed at the other campsite. <laughs> and then, the next moment. This weather is a huge tease. It's like, rain sun rain more rain it's going that way so we might get lucky in I'm fact hoping, it looks terrible over there i'm hoping we only got like the very edge of it oh look at that over there if it's going away from us then we definitely miss thunder just barely the rain had cleared away and the sun was shining but in the distance towering thunderclouds roiled and churned in the sky For now, the evening sun warmed everything up around us, and we all relaxed about the camp. I decided to take another dip into the river to escape the heat while the sun was out. And back on land, I had some palak paneer cooking for dinner. 
And the reason why I got this is because when Andrew and I were in the Smokies and we were at a campsite and had barely any food and there was these two other dudes and one of them had like a dehydrated like Indian meal. When he was done eating, he's like, here, I'm too full. Did one of you guys want this? <laughs> and he gave that to us and it was just like the best tasting food. I was like, I want to relive that experience and have the nostalgia. So I got this. It looks and smells good, but we'll see. It was on clearance after all. <laughs> oh, actually pretty tasty. Not quite as good as what you'd get at a restaurant, but out here, I think the scenery makes up for the lack of refinement. This is how I eat at home, sitting in my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much agree with your entire assessment. <laughs> and I happen to have some naan, which would be the perfect complement to this dinner. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'll get a little spoonful of that in my mouth. <laughs> like a cartoon character drifting towards a pie on a windowsill. <laughs> the rest of our evening was filled with laughter. I had some dehydrated mashed potatoes and chicken I wanted to prepare for dinner as well. And while we were waiting for it to cook, I spotted a bald eagle perched on a tree just down the river. As if a harbinger of storms, as soon as the eagle flew off, thunder and rain began rolling in, and we started scrambling to make sure our equipment was dry. Just like that, our brief moment of peace was snatched away. So this is not really the greatest campsite because it's a little bit open and yeah. there is lightning out there. Should we actually think about moving into the forest? Damn. There's one big tree over there. I'd say worst case scenario, we just go in there and we wait till the lightning stops and yeah. leave our stuff here. You want to do that? I don't know. I just know being in a big open field is not the best thing to be in a storm. The rain is definitely coming down. It is thundering as you can clearly hear. A little upset with how the uh, end of this turned out. But, I don't know, as long as it doesn't rain the whole night, it shouldn't be too bad. Yeah. Lightning is getting kind of strong. Everybody just get your jackets on and we'll just make a break for it. We're gonna get to the forest just in case. We're gonna leave our tents up and then just bring our rain jackets and a tarp because we would much rather be safe than sorry. You guys ready? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Yo, map. Yo, map. Okay. Okay. Everybody good? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. I think this is just a safer route for now. Cause I mean, we're like right out in an open field out there. That lightning's like right above us. Totally. Too. We grabbed our spare tarp and set it up as we watched the lightning flash above. I definitely know it's not good to like stand in the middle of a meadow during a lightning storm, but yeah, you don't want to stand under a tree if you're in a field, because then you're just making yourself, putting yourself under a taller target. Good news is, we got some mashed potatoes and chicken. <laughs> <laughs> we just haphazardly put this tarp up, get a little more rain off of us. Well, right now it sounds like the <clears throat> thunder is going away from us, and it's dying down. I feel like we'll be clear to go back to our campsites within an hour or so, but maybe we could leave this up all night just in case we have to do another retreat, though. I'd be okay with moving everything here eventually when the rain clears up. Remember when it was just beautiful and sunny and yeah, not a it wasn't world was not long ago. It's kind of a uh, fun in its own right though. This is an adventure, <laughs> no doubt about that. 
I'm just a little nervous for my life. <laughs> but like, there's part of me that actually likes this. <laughs> it's exciting. Yeah. It's like the thrill, it makes you feel alive. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna put my boat in and say that if the rain dies down, we move stuff here. I like the idea. I feel like I could fall asleep right now just sitting up. It's just like dealing with all this the whole trip is kind of exhausting. Yeah. As we ran over here, we each grabbed one additional item besides our raincoat. Brian got the hello for himself. I got a uh, packet of food. Robbie, I got the camera you're looking at right now. As you are one to do it, Andrew, what'd you get? I grabbed nothing. <laughs> <laughs> This explains everything. There's one clip to exemplify what our characters are, that's it. <laughs> the lightning is 17 seconds away now, and it looks like it's all pretty much gone. Still, the rain hasn't abated at all. What we're considering now is just going back out there and having this tarp ready in case lightning starts up again. Okay, we're going for it. Can't see anything without the lights. Oh my god, I can't see anything right now. When we got back to camp, we realized our tarp shelter had partially collapsed, and a pool of water had formed in the middle of it. We set the shelter back up so our equipment didn't get any wetter. At this point, I wanted to move our tarp to the trees, where we could have a more sturdy setup, safe from the wind and rain. So, we began gathering up our things, putting some of it under the canoes, and packing some of it into our bags. It's like boot camp. <laughs> it's like Navy SEALs training. They probably have it a lot tougher, to be honest. Yeah, probably. We found our way back to the woods and set all our gear under the backup tarp. We found a good spot for the night and then went back to camp to get the bigger tarp. And I grabbed some life jackets to use as a pillow tonight. Back in the forest, Andrew and Brian began setting up the tarp in the rain. It was pretty rough setting up in the rain at the dark of night and grown over uneven ground. We placed the smaller tarp underneath for an extra layer off the ground before settling into our damp shelter. Home sweet home, I guess. <laughs> you know, at this point, it's like you gotta channel your inner Aquaman, <laughs> communicate with the animals. <laughs> if you've ever endured anything in life worse than this, I'm very sorry. <laughs> Actually, it's pretty comfortable. Yes. Yeah, I mean, what? considering what we've got, this is bearable. I know that once I lie down, I'm just gonna be like, I'm not even gonna care. Yeah. <laughs> so it's gonna be like, well, I'm lying down. That's good enough. <laughs> we all sprayed our ankles with bug spray because we had just walked through knee-high meadows where ticks might roam. Uh, okay, you guys good to go? I'll do the drive. Yeah. Okay. I think so. All right. Go. Good luck. <laughs> all right. Buenos noches. <laughs> Given our current situation, we'll be okay. It won't be great. Won't be the best night ever. <laughs> It'll probably be the worst night ever. <laughs> But we'll be okay. All things considered, we're okay. <laughs> yeah, no, this is definitely not bad at all. We have nothing to complain about. Hopefully Brian and Andrew are alive by morning. Although, if it starts thundering again, They're gonna we'll be, be the out one. there with them. They're going to be the ones laughing. <laughs> no, we'll all be crying together <laughs> under that tarp. Just crying. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm flooded with guilt because we planned this. I planned this. No, because... Most of this trip has been awesome, and even this is kind of interesting. I will say that when we were sitting under that tarp waiting for the thunder, I was just like, my thoughts were just going a mile, and I was like, what if it just keeps thunderstorming? What if yeah, we have to sit here yeah. the whole night? And like, that's something you shouldn't have to deal with on a camping trip. I gotta admit, whenever things get so bad like that, it's a perfect storm, I just start cracking up. Yeah, it is. like, this is so that's funny. That's all you can do at that point, right? What are the chances that this can get even worse? And it does. <laughs> well... Thank you for tempting fate.
It had been a really rough night. Rather than cook breakfast like we had planned, we just wanted to get out of there and get back on the water. Well, one thing I'm glad that I didn't know until this morning, because it would have made last night even more ominous, was that there uh, were some bones lying around just like 10 feet from where we slept. Probably would have conjured up some thoughts of like scary predators, but now we're getting the hell out of here, so it's just kind of cool. <laughs> How was your night? Not terrible, but also not exactly great. <laughs> <laughs> so I take it you slept some. Brian said he only slept like an hour. I, oh yeah, I think I slept more than that, but it was really hard to fall asleep for a variety of reasons. <laughs> <laughs> the peaceful river seemed so far from a night of lying awake, listening to the rain pelt against your tarp, trying to calm your racing mind. Eventually we got all our gear loaded up and got back on the water. I'm so excited to eat, drink, and sit in an air-conditioned car. <laughs> that is, remember how I said canoeing is indescribable? <laughs> the feeling that I'm about to experience after this trip is indescribable. <laughs> How's everyone doing today? I'm, I'm actually now that I'm in the canoe. Yeah, I'm a thousand percent better. <laughs> After a night of storms, tall grass and rain and mud, it was so great to get back into the canoes and paddle gracefully across the water. It felt amazing, maneuvering skillfully around the logs, gliding along the river's surface, letting the water carry us downstream. It was a feeling of absolute effortlessness, serenity, and peace. Things had been rough last night, but at least now, there was no way they could possibly get worse. Turns out, things got worse. Maybe it was the fact that I had only an hour of sleep, or maybe it was the fast current. But our canoe had gotten snagged by a small log, and in a matter of seconds, it flipped over completely. Where's the drone go? Is that gone? Robbie and Brian's bags were completely soaked. Lenses that we had been actively using were lost, as was the drone, which got detached from the packs. What's the status? I can't see anything. Well, this might be a branch archive's biggest yet. So, as we're paddling along, I think you guys get a stick or something. There's a big log in the way, right in the fast current. Can I, can I say that this probably was a fireball? <laughs> oh god. We lost the drone, I think. We lost two lenses, the drone, and the tripod. Brian had eventually floated to shore, while Andrew and Thomas pulled me and our canoe to the bank. I had jumped into shoulder deep water to try and help push the waterlogged canoe oh, onto land. For a second there, I was panicking. Well, that's what these are for. <laughs> Uh, I was lucky because I got tangled on the stick. Oh. But I was able to stand myself up on it and get untangled. Yeah, at least nobody's hurt. Everybody still got their wallets, keys. <laughs> keys are in my bat pack. I assume that's my pack. Andrew? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Also, you guys need to clip these to the forks. Yeah, you know, it's so funny. I Before we left, I was like, man, I really should clip it. And I was like, no, it'll be fine. <laughs> I never had a problem before. Oh, this is the first for everything. This is that trip. Everything. This is the last do, you, trip. do you think it's worth trying to paddle up there a little bit and look yeah, for some stuff? We should might as well take a look. <clears throat> if we can. All right. Well, in that case, why don't you two stay here? I'll do the paddling. No, no, no. There should be two yeah, of you. Right, right, right. This, this all three. Let's get this completely turned over and let's get it all in water. One to one to paddle. 
one to one to retrieve. Yeah, we got it. Well, you gotta get under it like this. Sorry, I'm not much help, but pull it back. One, two, three, three. There you go. Okay. Yeah. This is a little loose. The other paddle, do you know where that's at? Those are supposed to. No, it's right here. Oh, that one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then. Well, I guess we need two people. Yeah. Get one somebody else getting here. Creep. There you go. I'm useless because I can't see. There you I go. I think Brian should sit here. We paddled around, trying to retrieve some of the stuff that we had lost. But alas, we couldn't see a thing. Um, it's probably just down at the bottom there, and it's probably not too deep, but I don't think it's worth trying to swim under there like deep sea divers to get it out. So, we're going to abandon the drone and the two lenses. Okay. Let's get out of here. Oh. You all good? This couldn't have happened if we were hiking. Being this exposed to the wild can be an ecstatic experience, but it can also cause all sorts of unwanted trouble. It's funny, now every single branch looks like... Oh, there's a branch! There's a branch! <laughs> It's tra traumatized <laughs> forever by falling along. Uh, like even, you'll just be hiking and you'll be like, I don't want to trip over that. <laughs> There's a stick right here. There's a log right here. Big rock over here. We got sticks up ahead. There's kind of a hidden stick here. Be careful. Big sticks up here. And then as soon as we clear this, there's going to be a couple loggy things on either side, so... That's existence. A balance of chaos and order, good and bad, light and dark. Call it whatever you want, but life always seems to be a swirl of opposing forces. And sometimes, the pain is what's more noticeable. It almost seemed like some sort of divine mockery, that after one of our roughest nights, just hours before the whole trip was over, this disaster happened. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> okay, please get us out of here. I'm gonna put down the camera. All around us, the wilderness just continued on existing, unaware of our recent tragedy. And in such a beautiful setting, even we started to forget about it too. We were talking two days ago about how existence is kind of this balance between like pain and pleasure, or however you want to put it. And we both think that it kind of veers a little more towards the pleasure aspect, but there are definitely moments where <laughs> it takes a darker turn. Mm -hmm. But I think these are moments where, like, you just have to use these to, like, reflect on yourself and your life and what there is to be thankful for. And maybe, Think about how you could not make the same mistake next time. <laughs> <laughs> At least the sun is out now, right as you said that. And there is that super cheesy saying that says, it's always darkest right before dawn, which I don't think that's true. <laughs> I think it's darkest in the middle of the night, but what do I know? <laughs> Unavoidable tragedies happen all the time in life, but we still believe that, on the whole, the universe is skewed towards benevolence. We were talking about the more things that go wrong, the more prepared you are for the future. We are prepared for anything. <laughs> <laughs> this has been like a series of unfortunate events to the T. We were upset about just how wrong things went on this last morning, but we were also laughing about it, basking in the sunlight and making the best of things. We suffer trauma from hurting other people, not from helping them. Our memories always seem rosier and happier than reality. Even after losing the expensive equipment that we rely on to make these videos, we were able to get over the initial shock and frustration, focus on what we hadn't lost, and laugh about the absurdity of the situation. Regardless of what life throws at us, we still choose to believe that existence, people, 
and all the things around us are ultimately good. And maybe that in itself is evidence enough. Ryan got like an hour of sleep last night. I've been reading a book on sleep and about the detriment that you suffer from not getting enough sleep. We left port for like 40 seconds before we capsized, and I can imagine Brian in his head saying, Robbie, you gotta help out, I'm not gonna be able to do this, but just like the brain not getting the signal, so he's just like, oh crap, uh-oh. <laughs> but it will lead to Herman's lunch specials from noon to 2.30 p.m. <laughs> so it'll all be good. <laughs> Coffee is instant happiness. I am business school. I've been having three cups a day. Yeah. Brian's just getting it over with. <laughs> He's going full blind. <laughs> Once I got up to the soup table, this was the clear choice. Sometimes we pick post hike meals just kind of randomly and haphazardly. This is one of those times, and it works out sometimes, and doesn't the others. I'm happy to say this is a complete success. <laughs> Verdi. Decadent. Very good. It's yeah. got that right amount of tartness. <clears throat> mm, oh but super God. creamy. Well, like a bunch of piranhas going in for the kill right now. <clears throat> <clears throat> it even looks like it. I've got Expedition Research LLC on the phone. He needs our best agent. Stat. I'm on it. I'm pulling up one agent capable of this mission. In Russia, he's known as Jacob Milk. In France, he's known as Eric Locker. In America, he's known as John Truitt. But we know him as. It's Pruitt. James Pruitt. <laughs> also, special shout out to his kids, Gage, Lisa, and Logan. Say my name. I know you. You're Norman Mountjoy. Ann McBride? No. Charlie Joe? No. Hong Long? It's Jim. Jim Potts. Oh, oh yeah, uh, Jim Potts. You're damn right. Aren't you a little short for a stormtrooper? Oh, the helmet. I'm Jason Bourgeois. I've got your tuck and coop unit. I'm here with T. Bryce Ryan. He's on the Apple Trail. It's one of the trails we hike. You're who? T. Bryce Ryan? Where is he? <laughs> oh, no, no. Yeah. Here, you got it? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Robbie literally just went waist deep into the water because the camera started rolling down the hill. And uh, he chased after it, and I, I should be helping, but I think we need to capture this for posterity's sake. We need, like, a bag of rice. 